Hi, my name is Stephen England from the Art of Sustainability. And in 2019, I had the great privilege of interviewing Herbert Gerde, a member of the Club of Rome and a contributor to the 2018 report from the Club of Rome called Come On. The theme of the interview was the shadow of enlightenment. And the first question I asked him was, what differentiates the new enlightenment from the past? But now we will we'll just start with the old enlightenment, the enlightenment yeah. that was, yeah. and and just touch upon that in terms of what they what the enlightenment was and what the new enlightenment is going to be. So, if yeah. we could just touch upon that. Sure, sure. Well, the enlightenment really grew out of the sort of the beginnings of the scientific revolution in the 17th century, particularly with, with somebody like Descartes. And his famous statement was, I think, therefore I am. And that in some ways superseded a previous sort of set of uh, thought, which was before that when people were primarily religious, it was really, I believe, therefore I am. Mm. I think, therefore I am, really means suddenly the human mind and rationality comes to the fore, challenging in many ways the kind of religious state of mind that existed before that. And that in some ways set humans free to begin to explore what nature is all about, what the universe is all about in ways as never before. Once you set God aside, as to some extent happened uh, in the Enlightenment, you begin to put human beings into the center stage. And that really what has happened in that time. So suddenly there was a whole range of new scientific developments in astronomy, in biology, in physics, in chemistry, in medicine and so on, in food sciences and suddenly human beings began to explore how their own power to influence the world became much more important. So certainly the Industrial Revolution was a direct result ultimately out of the, of the Enlightenment and that in turn has led to many of the issues that we are facing today. Of course the center stage aspect of the Industrial Revolution was of the introdu introduction of steam technology. Suddenly we had the capacity for the first time to dig into deep into the earth crust, get out fossil fuel resources as never before, not only just to make fires, but to turn fire into steam, into power. So human beings have been powered by fossil fuel technology ever since. And in many ways, that is the starting point of the great problems that we are facing today with climate change, with all, kind, all manner of, of pollution that we are today facing and all the aspects of how we are affecting the planet as never before. And I, I, I want to um, drill into that a little bit more and, and start with the idea of Descartes and yeah. the, the idea of separation that Descartes introduces and the mechani mechanistic um, <coughs> uh, worldview that yeah, uh, sure. uh, still predominates uh, yeah. in, in, in our time today. And, and, the, and, and how that separates us from nature. And then we see nature as brute force and, and for our own purposes. And how this informs our thinking and informs the shadow that we're, we're, we're casting in terms of that sense of disconnect that, which sits within, 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 um, within, the, new within, the, uh, within the Enlightenment. I, I, could you talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, sure, sure. But basically, once you introduce the idea that we live in a mechanistic universe, rather than an organic universe, which in some ways was what was the main predominant thinking before that, you are suddenly in a situation where you change the nature of thinking fundamentally. And that also became the basis of humanism, which is directly related to the rationalism that emerged out of the Enlightenment. So suddenly human beings, center stage, we are no longer you know, biological beings in a sense as a result of our use of technology that arise from that. We become what I call the amplified man. <clears throat> Today we are powered by technology as never before, uh, through, particularly through steam and, and energy technologies. And so certainly that has set us aside and separated us from nature as never before. If I stand next to a hunter-gatherer who's been harvesting from nature without really 
uh, modifying it. I'm a completely different creature. Biologically, ultimately, we're the same, but I am today amplified by technology as a direct result of the inventions that came out of the Enlightenment. And so certainly today, for instance, my use of fossil fuels is incredible. I mean, I'm part of a civilization where every year we're burning the equivalent of a million years worth of fossil fuels every year to make our industrial urban civilization possible. So that is a direct result of many of the uh, mindsets that uh, emerged out of the Enlightenment in the first instance. Uh, and I know you, as part of your film work, uh, you worked with indigenous peoples yeah. in, in the Amazon. Yeah. And you are quite passionate about the, the, the way that they behave towards the, the world around them, which is very different from the amplified man from, 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 from the way we live our lives. And I know that um, from conversations we've, we've, we've had over, over a period of time, about uh, your views on religion and your views on indigenous belief systems. Could, yeah. could you sure, touch sure. upon that? Well, if you live as a hunter-gatherer or an indigenous <coughs> person somewhere in a rainforest or as in, in, in Greenland or you know, in every kind of environment on the planet, there were hunter-gatherer people. And their lifestyle depended on an understanding of nature without being able to integrate into the natural system that you don't, don't modify very much as a hunter-gatherer. Basically, you need to understand how it works. So you need to understand what you need to harvest in order to supply the food to your, to your family. Uh, you need to be able to know how much you can take from nature without destroying it. And all of that is based on, in, in many ways, you could call a kind of scientific understanding of, of a sort of pre scientific, uh, in modern terms, understanding of nature. <clears throat> so for instance, in the Amazon, uh, tribal people have hundreds of words for green, because green is the color that uh, surrounds them. The Eskimos, Inuit people in, in Greenland have hundreds of words for, for, for snow, because there's so many different types of snow and ice that surrounds them. I have a friend who studied with the Kayapo people in, in, in the Brazilian Amazon and they found that they had a word for every insect, for every plant, for every living being surrounding them. So that sort of understanding is accumulated over millennia, over thousands of years in ways, of course, that we do not have today. More recently, when the world moved towards having just one God, you know, the, the, the God of Christianity, of Judaism, basically here, that then becomes the predominant concept. So you're no longer primarily focused on the local environment that you've got to know over eons of time, but on the kind of idea of the one God that dominates everything. So those kind of belief systems already allow or make us depart from our integration in nature that precedes a modern civilization. And that is, of course, in many ways then replaced by modern science, where once again we are trying to understand nature in new ways, but at the same time, we are doing it in a very compartmentalized way. Today, if you speak to a physicist, you cannot easily talk to a chemist or a, or, or a doctor. Basically, modern science compartmentalizes in ways that directly contributes to our separation of nature because we've lost that integrated view of nature that uh, predominates the lifestyles of, of tribal people. So, so in Looking forward to the to the new enlightenment, yeah. what, what what are the distinct differences between the enlightenment that we we inherited and we still live in, and and the new enlightenment? What would you say the key the key changes in terms of yeah. the, 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 we'll, we'll talk about some of the technology going forward, sure. but in terms of the underlying thinking, yeah, what what is different? What needs to change? Do you think taking into account the the, the things you've been touching upon? Well, the critical issue now is to get a f new holistic understanding of the living world that we live in. The reality is that we've been on, on a collision course with nature ever since the Industrial Revolution, <coughs> and that has culminated in the incredible impacts of, of the ma humanity today in, in the ages called the Anthropocene, the age of man, where basically humans have taken the role of geology in terms of the sheer scale of our impacts on, on, on the environment. So that is a reality today. We are confronted with unprecedented numbers of human beings uh, from one, one 
billion or so in, in 1800 to nearly 7 billion today. But beyond that, it's also the incredible impact of economic growth that has emerged as a result of our uses of technology. So suddenly we are in a situation where we are faced with disaster in terms of the emergency that we are now in, but at the same time we do not have the kind of full understanding that we need to really develop in order to cope with the fact that we cannot outgrow living nature. We are currently in the process of destroying wherever we look through pollution, through burning fossil fuels, through our uses of technology, through plastics in the ocean. All these issues that are now in the news all the time are the direct result of a lack of an integrated understanding of how humanity needs to integrate into the living environment on this planet. So the key term, in my view, is a new type of understanding. The concept of Gaia, the living planet, of course, feeds into that very nicely, came out of the 1970s. James Lovelock and others since developed it. And basically, we are beginning in scientific terms now to see a new integration of biology with physics, with chemistry, and an over overview and a holistic overview of how nature works and how we as human beings need to integrate within the process of the circular systems of nature. The fundamental difference between modern economies and nature's economies, the modern economy is essentially linear. It takes resources from nature. Uh, we use it in our daily lives in, in terms of products that we buy in the shop. Then we dump, it, dump the stuff and it ends up as pollution somewhere else in nature. Nature works as, as, as essentially circular system. All waste in nature get reabsorbed into the soil and become the, the basis for future growth. And that is when you look at a, a walk around in a forest as we're able to do in this wonder, wonderful environment here in the Wai Valley. You can learn from the way nature works as a circular system. And that is so terribly important to understand. So we need to have this new understanding of the integration of all the different bodies of knowledge that we have today into one body of holistic ecology that understands how we in the future need to relate to nature in a fundamentally different way. Within the context of, of the report in this conversation, it's very much about reconnecting yeah. and, and finding that reconnection yeah. and, and looking at complex systems rather than isolated systems. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the key issue, certainly. Mm. I mean, one shouldn't say the Enlightenment was wholly bad. You know, I mean, it's very important to understand that we have developed our human minds in remarkable ways as never before. I mean, obviously, the knowledge of tribal people in, in places like the Amazon in the past was very localized in terms of how they lived. And if they moved to a different place, they would have been at a loss. I mean, that happened to North American Indians when they were shifted uh, from one part of North America to another part. Suddenly, they were not familiar with the environments around them. We are today trying to, through our minds, through our through, through, through our rationality, trying to get, develop a global picture mm. of how we in our daily lives here in our local environment here need to nevertheless have a global understanding of how the world works and how we as our individual in our individual way of life need to need to relate to that. Mm. So it's a great, great challenge. And of course, it's an educational challenge. Mm. And it's quite hard for people who are not in a daily way living off nature, for instance, growing, doing gardening or or you know, involved in food growing in some way, but being living as urban people to, to get hold of this kind of new knowledge of holistic integration with nature. We need to move from the mechanical concept that Descartes came up with to a new kind of organic concept. There's a fundamental difference between mechanism and organism, and that we need to understand that very clearly.